Why do we see that so many of the world's traditional martial arts hold random standing joint lock techniques in their syllabus of movement that we almost never ever get to see used in MMA? Here is what I think about it and what I believe. If in your training you held the ideal of addressing every single element of fighting, you would want to address every possible situation that might come up in a fight. Regardless of how often the opportunity for a specific technique actually arises. But what if you don't hold that ideal? What if you're training primarily for sport, with the obvious intention to perform to the best of your abilities and win? You would have to prioritize what you focus on. Example, time spent training Kotegayashi is time not spent training Harai Goshi. And from what we've seen is that the opportunity for Harai Goshi comes up way more often than that of Kotegayashi. So if you went with the intention to win a competition, you'd want to spend more time with what comes up all the time versus training everything that may possibly come up and lose precious hours drilling for situations that almost certainly will happen. That's what MMA does. That's what its training is. You want to spend most of your time perfecting the tools that address the most common situations in a fight under that rule set. For you to perform as best as you can, there's not enough time to practice lower percentage moves. So for these esoteric techniques, it's not that the pretty much universal outward wrist twist technique, most famously known as Koregayashi, doesn't biomechanically work. It absolutely does. But why train it if in your 10 fights it might come up once or twice? Well, if you hold the previously mentioned ideal of addressing every problem in fighting, you'd want to train it. Why not? Especially if you're not planning for a huge sport career, you're just exploring martial arts. And that's okay. And if you do compete, you might catch someone off guard. That's about it. All I have to say, thanks for watching.